Usually, when someone is proclaimed a saint, an elaborate ceremony takes place in St. Peter's Square. But to get to that point, first it must be proven that the Blessed carried out a miracle. But there are some exceptions. There are some cases in which a Blessed can be canonized with a so-called equivalent or equivalente canonization. Here, the Pope only has to sign a decree to make it official. With a normal canonization, uh, the Pope introduces a cult uh, to the Universal Church. Uh, with uh, an equipolente uh, canonization, the Pope confirms a cult that already exists. He doesn't introduce anything. And that is why for an equipolente canonization, there is no ceremony in St. Peter's, because nothing new is added to uh, the devotional life of the Church. In an equivalent canonization, it only has to be proven that the Blessed already has a devout following, and also fame for miraculous intercessions, and also a proved virtuosity. And this type of canonization was introduced by Pope Urban VIII in 1632, and can only be used when the Blessed has already been venerated for years. Pope Francis used it to canonize Peter Faber, the first Jesuit priest. I think uh, that this procedure, uh, this specific pr uh, procedure has been chosen um, because the Pope wanted it very much, <laughs> uh, and it goes very quickly. Uh, because with a miracle, you have to wait till a miracle happens. Uh, whereas with the cult, if it exists, it exists suffices to prove that it, that, ex that it exists, and you don't have to wait for any divine uh, interventions. It's not the first time Pope Francis carries out this type of canonization. He used it before to canonize the 8th century Italian mystic Angela de Foligno. The equivalent canonization was also used by Benedict XVI for Hildegard of Bingen and John Paul II for Kinga of Poland.